I hope you guys are ready for 30 speed reviews. This is a series where I update you on all of the makeup that I've been testing. All of these products are products that have gone through a lot of testing before I felt comfortable putting them in this video, kind of closing the chapter of talking about these products with my final thoughts. They're one of my favorite videos to do and, the, and ones that I spend the most time on, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let's go ahead and get started, starting off with complexion. The first product that I have is from Neutrogena. This is the Radiant Primer and Serum. I picked this up from Target. It's pretty expensive. It was like $20. I would just save the money and buy a high-end primer that works better. This is fine. It gives a glassy glow to the skin. Be careful because you can see the glitters in the skin. They aren't chunky or anything. It's not a product that I would wear on its own. It looks like you put on a product with glitter on top, but it has a really pretty wet glassy look to the skin, which I think looks really great underneath a foundation, but on its own, it's not my favorite. This is a solid okay. I think it's a bit expensive, honestly, from the drugstore, so that's where I would kind of lead you away from this, but it's not a bad product. Next up, I have the NYX Plump Right Back Plumping Serum and Primer. This one is a lot different than the Neutrogena. It doesn't give as much glow to the skin, but I feel like it kind of gets in the skin more and hydrates it more. It also has a bit more tack to it compared to the Neutrogena. You'll see in my demo, I actually have the Neutrogena on one side and this on the other side. You can see how wet the Neutrogena looks, but this one feels a little bit more intensely hydrating. I think this works better as a makeup primer than the Neutrogena because it does have that grip that the Neutrogena doesn't have, but it's not gonna give you as glowy of an appearance. But I think I prefer this just for my skin's need, just because I would prefer something a little bit more intensely hydrating that goes into the skin as opposed to the Neutrogena, which leaves the glow, but on top of the skin, it doesn't really aid the texture of your skin. So yeah, I think I like this a little bit better than the Neutrogena, but they are very, very different from one another. And, and both I think are very, very solid primers. So this is a product that I've been testing literally for months. It's been in my speed reviews drawer for months before I actually felt comfortable talking about it. This is the Armani Fluid Sheer Glow Enhancer in the shade number two. After months of testing this, months of not being sure how to use it, where I liked it, where I didn't like it, I've decided I don't like this product. So I did use it today. I feel like there's a lot of glitter in here. So if you have mature skin, this is not going to be complementary to your skin type. Even on my hand where the glitters stay, it makes my hands look a lot more wrinkled. So I don't like the finish of this. I feel like even though it is glittery when I mix it into foundations, it just completely disappears. I have used it all over the skin just as a primer base. It's too glittery for that purpose. On top of foundation, it gets eaten up by the foundation and again, the glitters are just an issue for me. So ultimately, after trying to figure out the best way to use this, literally for months this has been in the drawer to be put in this video once I felt ready to explain it. I just don't like it. I tried way too hard to get this to work for me and it didn't. Let's move into foundations. I have three. So the first one I haven't talked about on my channel, but if you follow me on TikTok or Instagram, I posted a short of the Lancome Tante Idol Ultra Wear Care and Glow Foundation. This is their newest foundation. I believe it launched about a month ago at this point. I'm really excited because I actually got to do a campaign for this foundation on my page with the short form video. But even though that was sponsored, everything I said about it is true. This is one of my new favorite foundations for the Florida summer humidity because it does give me a medium coverage. It gives a very subtle glow. It's nothing like a glowy foundation, but there is like a natural dew to it and it lasts in the heat. And I get a lot of sweat around the top of my forehead. It doesn't break down the foundation at all. So if you are looking for a long wear foundation, this is amazing. If you do have dry skin, my tip to you is to make sure that you do hydrate prior to applying this. Just because if your skin is dry, this does have the tendency to show it because it is a little bit more of a matte finish. It is matte, but it has kind of a natural glow to it that comes out as you wear it out. But anyways, this is super duper long wear. It's nice and thin. If you want the full demo and all of that, definitely check out my Instagram or TikTok where I posted the video on this. 
it's really, really nice. I mean, Lancome is known for their foundations, and I feel good about this one. Now, on this side of my face, I have the Neutrogena Sensitive Skin Serum Foundation. I had been curious about this one for a while. This is a really good foundation from the drugstore. It gives a light coverage. It's not going to give you a medium or full at all. It's very, very thin, but it has such a dewy, hydrated look to the skin. So if you're looking for something that's light coverage, gives you a dewy look, I think you will really like this. It's very high quality. You wouldn't even know it's drugstore. And it looks very different from the lawn comb. I have this on this side of my face. And pairing it against the lawn comb, I really saw how wet, dewy, hydrated this looked. And that really is a trending kind of finish on the skin right now. So I think a lot of people will like this. The packaging kind of sucks, if I'm being honest. The dropper right here doesn't work that good. But it looks really healthy on the skin. Really great for every day. Very shocked by Neutrogena on this. It's a good one. I'm not wearing this one today and I'm not sad about it because I do not like this product. This is the Makeup Revolution Super Dewy Skin Tint Tint Moisturizer. I picked this up on a whim, hadn't heard anything about it. It's really, really bad. I actually wore this all over my face and I thought my makeup looked okay, nothing to write home about, but when I wore this side by side with the Neutrogena, I realized how unflattering this product is. It emphasizes is texture so if you have milk bumps white heads any sort of acne anything like that on your face this literally just makes them pop out it's the weirdest thing when I had Neutrogena on one side of my face the Neutrogena just looks so healthy hydrated and smooth and then there was a clear difference on the other side of my face that had this where all of you know like my hormonal acne and white heads and all of that here were just like shooting out it was not cute so this I can't wait to feature in my worst of <laughs> for this month because it's not good. Um, I have one concealer for today's video. This is the Maybelline Superstay Active Wear Concealer. I really wanted to try this because the Superstay foundation is one of my all-time favorites. And I actually heard a lot of you didn't like this one, so I was like preparing myself. I actually really like it. So I can see why people wouldn't like it. It is a drier base concealer and another con to it is it doesn't really resemble the foundation too much because the foundation has really full coverage and it's a really matte long wearing foundation this is not full coverage i would say it gives a medium coverage but i can definitely see some darkness peeking through i think you benefit from a color corrector underneath but it does have a drier more matte consistency which i can see being the issue for a lot of people i will say when i put this down i'm always like <laughs> It's a little dry, but as the day goes on, it looks better and better because I think it looks dry at first because it is a drier concealer, but then it kind of like freezes and stays that way to the point of it being quite long wear. So cons is it doesn't have as much coverage as I wanted and it is a bit dry. But overall, I really like the wear on this and I think it certainly gets the job done as well. So I've been enjoying this, but if you do not like drier concealers, this might not be for you. I'm actually gonna have to try this next time and make sure I really concentrate on the hydration of my under eyes to see if that will improve anything in terms of dryness, but I'm not really too bothered by it. I have a couple of powders. So the first one that I have is from Revlon. I picked this up because I remember using this back in the day like years ago before I did what I do now. This is the Revlon Photo Ready Blurring Powder and it said new and improved and I was like, let me take a trip down memory lane here and honestly, I do like this powder and when I use it on its own, I think it does look really nice but it's not super blurring which is what it's advertised as. It does the job, I don't feel like it's bad but I have it on this side of my face and I put it down, I used a damp sponge but not too damp of course and it does a really nice job of setting my face. But on this side of my face I use the Sigma Soft Focus setting powder in Vanilla Beam and I noticed how much more blurring the Sigma one is so now I like the Revlon less because the Revlon looked fine. It kind of set the makeup and that's that but this actually blurred the skin. I even ended up putting it on porous areas on the side that I used the Revlon just to blur it a little bit more and even everything out. So while I liked the Revlon, I don't like it as much anymore because I realized how much more blurring the Sigma is. I love this Sigma powder. It's one of my new favorite powders. I've tried a lot of really good ones this year and this one is up there in terms of being really lightweight but blurring the skin. I once again also used a damp sponge to apply this. So this one is definitely a hit. Save the money on the Revlon. Pick this one up instead if you're looking for something more blurry.
Couple of bronzers. The first one is a cream bronzer from Makeup Revolution. This is in the shade Light. I love this bronzer. If it weren't for the packaging or the label, you would not be able to tell that this was a affordable bronzer. Now it's not like a cream to powder, it really is a true cream, so it's gonna stay creamy on the skin. I have it on this side of my face. The tone itself is really beautiful. It is quite a slick consistency, like I said, not cream to powder at all. I use my sponge to apply it. It's the perfect tone, perfect color, perfect level of pigmentation, perfect level of emollients. I love this, so if you're looking for a good cream bronzer from the drugstore, this is one of my favorites. I would say I definitely prefer it over the e.l.f. putty bronzer, so yeah. This one is really good, one of my favorite cream bronzers I've tried at this price point. And then I also do have a powder bronzer. This is from Jaclyn Cosmetics. These took so long to get to me that I never really got to review them, but these are the pressed bronzers. So I have two shades, Vitamin D and Tan Lines. Vitamin D is slightly more neutral. I have that setting the cream bronzer because the cream bronzer wasn't very warm. And then Tan Lines I have on this side of the face because it's more toasty on this skin. It has more of a caramely undertone. I love both, it just depends what look I'm going for. It has a very caramel mocha scent to it, which I really love. It's not overpowering, but if you don't like fragrance in your cosmetics, you might not like that. But I like my makeup to smell like dessert, okay? I can't complain. I think this is a very nice bronzer formulation. It's not anything to write home about, you know, it's not going down as one of my all-time favorite bronzers, but I don't have anything bad to say about it. It's a really solid powder bronzer. Blends out great, applies a great level of pigmentation. I like the shades that she has, at least the ones that I picked up. They smell delicious, they get the job done so yeah I'm keeping these they are a very very solid bronzer I have a couple blushes so the first one is from Mac I picked this up from the cosmetic company store it's the glow play blush in totally synced you can get it on Mac anyways but I've got it because it was a really pretty light lilac -y kind of shade not flattering for my skin tone at all I was like kind of hoping that it could pull through and work for me but it just couldn't it looks way too light on me I look sick when I wear it I've been able to make it work with certain looks that I've done, you know, applying very complementary colors to this, but generally speaking, when I just pop this on, ooh, it's such a bad color. Now the formula itself I really love. I have a couple of shades of this already in my collection, which is why I tried to make this color work for me because I thought it would be really pretty with cool tone looks. But yeah, unless you're more on the fair side, don't recommend this. I also have been using this blush palette from Ofra. This is in collaboration with at Lamb with Susan. So I got a bunch of stuff from their Project Influencer launch, which is where they partner with a lot of influencers. And she curated this beautiful blush palette with Ofra. And I have to say, these typically aren't colors that I reach for, but I've been reaching for this palette a lot. The convenience, I just love the overall look of it. I think right now I'm wearing this shade. This pool's a lot warmer on my skin than it looks in the pan. And Ofra has a solid blush formula. Nothing amazing, but it really does work. And I love a good blush palette. I love having multiple options for my cheeks I love mixing and matching and all of that and I think overall this has been really really nice So if you want to support glam with Susan or you just want a really nice blush palette that you're able to take the pans out of I really like this. I've been enjoying it a lot It's the kind of product where once I put it in my drawers It's not gonna stand out against all of my makeup, but since it's been here on my desk I haven't been able to stop reaching for it for highlights. I'm starting off with a cream highlights. This is from Tarte this is the Maracuja Juicy Glow Cream Highlight in Champagne Glow. This is one of the best cream highlights I've ever tried. And that statement holds a lot of weight for me because I do not like liquid or cream highlights. I'm a powder highlight kind of girl, but this, I even had powder on my skin and I applied this on this cheek and it melted in like butter, didn't disrupt anything. That's my big pet peeve about cream highlights is that they'll disrupt what you got going on underneath. Not this, so this is a really solid one. I also have a powder highlight from Ofra. This came in Ali Dawson's bundle. I do have her palette that I'm going to talk about in my palette rankings, but she chose this highlight to be in the bundle. It's all of the lights, so it's a mixture, I believe, of existing Ofra highlight shades. Ofra highlights are really, really nice, but they are very, very blinding. I have it on this side. I've just been reaching for this one out of convenience. I've been enjoying it a lot. I've been enjoying playing with the different undertones. It's a good highlighter if you're interested, but just know she a bit blingy. And the last blush bronzer highlight situation that we have is a palette. This is from Physicians Formula and this is kick butt. I really love this. This is the Physicians Formula Butter Dream Team palette. Anytime they come out with these palettes, 
I buy them because they're really great quality and they're the best value because if you buy these items individually, Physicians Formula can be up there in price. So here you have two bronzers, two blushes, one highlight, and one kind of multitasking complexion powder. I don't really use that, but I use everything else. The highlight isn't too dark on me, believe it or not, but I love mixing and matching the bronzers. I even demoed this blush right here because I thought it was so pretty. It has a pretty glow. If you want really good cheap products from the drugstore, you get great value out of these palettes. And I never have anything bad to say about these palettes because they're very good. And these are options that I reach for all of the time, especially when I see them at the drugstore. I'm going to pick them up if there's a new one. So highly recommend this one. Really good quality, really great colors this year. The last complexion product that I have is from Kate Somerville. This is the Uncomplicated SPF Makeup Setting Spray. There are pros and cons to this product. Overall, I'm going to say I really enjoy this product, but I absolutely hate the application of this. It is an aerosol can. It's very potent. I feel like I am spraying hairspray on my face, and I have poo-pooed on a lot of setting sprays in the past because I cannot stand the application. I can't breathe when I spray it, but I love it the way this makes my makeup look. So one thing you have to be careful about is when you spray it, it will stick to the hairs on your face, even if you shave your face. It will find hairs to stick to, so you can almost see like a halo around your face. Take your sponge, press it in, and normally that would be game over for me. Like, it's horrible to apply, and it gives me a halo of hair around my face. But I swear to you, when you push it in, it completely changes the look of your makeup, smooths everything out, hydrates everything, softens the look of your face. It is like magic in a bottle. You gotta work for it though because it is painful to apply, but something about this really creates a very soft and smooth and hydrated look to the face. It is so crazy. And it has SPF 50, which I mean, always apply your sunscreen in the morning first thing but an extra layer won't hurt so yeah just know i hate applying her i really do but she does magic to my face very similar to what charlotte tilbury's does if not even better in terms of like what it does because my skin was looking a little dry and then i put this on and now my skin looks Gypsy. All right, let's move on over to the eyes. The first product that I have is from Patrick Ta. I've talked about this on my channel a couple of times, so I'm gonna breeze by it. This is the Patrick Ta Major Brow Defining Pencil. If you like a really nice, thin, small eyebrow pencil, I think you will like this. It's not too creamy, it's not too dry. I honestly would probably prefer a little bit more dry, but it really does allow you to get very individual hair-like strokes. I mean, Patrick Ta just does a great job with his makeup line in general. And I mean, he stayed consistent with that statement when it came to this brow pen. So I've been thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it. I think it's a good one. Next up, I picked this product up at the drugstore because of all the hype. <laughs> and I'm, um, I don't like it. This is the NYX, the brow glue. And people were swearing up and down that this is like glue for your eyebrows. I strongly disagree. Maybe I have particularly stubborn eyebrows, but I, you know, try and get a little bit of a fluffy brow going just to thicken the appearance of them. But my eyebrow hairs fall. Like I've had to do this two, three times since first applying it to really liven them back up. I mean, the ABH is much better. Patrick Ta has an eyebrow gel that's much better. Benefits is much better. Yeah, I'm not getting the hype about this. I guess my eyebrows just don't like to listen, but my eyebrows fall with that. And then eyeliner. I have been using the Hourglass Voyeur Waterproof Gel Eyeliners. Once these set down, they are not moving. There's a ton of different colors. I've only been playing with Obsidian, which is a black, and then Forest. So I have Forest on my waterline. It has not faded in my waterline at all. And I have the black on Obsidian on the upper lash line. And I've been enjoying using pencil liners lately, even on the upper lash line. So applying these, they are very, very creamy. Sometimes they kind of slip and slide, but once you get them down, like once they hit the skin, they don't move. So you can't even really blend them out, which has been a bit difficult for me to understand because they really do glide across the eyelid, but 
then you can't smudge it. And I, I wish it had a little bit more dry time so that I could manipulate the product a little bit better, but dang, it stays. So I think that these are really, really, really good eyeliners, but just know you get no smudge time with them, but they stay put. I've also been testing the One Size Fantasize Mascara. If you have small, short, thin, sparse lashes, anything like that, I don't recommend this. Maybe if you have bigger lashes, I'd feel differently, but the wand is a little too fat, so I do find it difficult to apply on my lower lashes. They do give a little bit of volume, not really so much length. It's okay, but I do find that this mascara also does flake a little bit. So yeah, I feel like if you have naturally thick, full eyelashes, you might like this. But you know, my fellow Asian lashed girls, ah. And then the very last item I have for eyes is from Lily Lashes. These are the 3D Faux Mink Half Lashes in the style Dreamy. This is one of Lily Lashes' newest collections. It is a half lash collection. Obsessed with this collection. And I'm talking about these now because, and this is the only style that I've tried, but Ulta, for their 21 Days of Beauty sale, they are going to have this collection for 50% off. I highly recommend. I think they just look so beautiful on my eyes, but still natural. They definitely elongate my eyes. So yeah, we're liking that. We're liking that a lot. All right, finally to the last category, lips. We're gonna start off with this guy from Kopari. This is the Tripeptide Lip Cloud. It's okay. So I use this before makeup application, but it doesn't have really any lasting power for a hydrating lip balm slash gloss kind of situation like this. I would prefer if it was a little bit thicker, a little bit more sticky because this is so thin, almost like water. I actually applied this three times before getting to my lips. It does hydrate, but it doesn't last long enough so you don't get that full intensive hydration for a long amount of time. So while I do like it, I wish it was a bit thicker. I have a lot of other lip balms that I would prefer to sit on my lips during makeup application. Okay, <laughs> so next I want to talk about the Rare Beauty lip line. So I got all of her lip liners and lipstick sent to me. So these are the Kind Words Matte Lip Liners. And then I also have the lipsticks. So the lip liners themselves, very, very creamy, really great color selection. They are twisty uppy and then you can pull out the sharpener to get a sharp line. I find it a little bit hard to get a really defined line. When I use these, I normally have to go in with a concealer to kind of sharpen the line, but they're very creamy, easy to apply. The lipsticks also feel very thin on the lips, but in a good way, very creamy. But overall, I'm not a big fan of these because anytime I wear these two together, the Rare Beauty Lip Liner and the Rare Beauty Lipsticks, they don't last on me. I don't know what it is. I think they're almost like too creamy and too thin so they just wipe off so easily every time I wear these together and my lips are bare within the hour and I don't understand it because I like everything else about the product but longevity is a no on these particularly the lipsticks the lip liners last a little longer but dang they disappear <laughs> Okay, I also tried this formula from L'Oreal. This is the Glow Paradise Lip Balm Glow thing in the shade 110. I don't like this on its own. It looks a little dry on my lips considering the intended purpose of this product. It's much better when you prep the lips and you have a lip liner underneath. This is a lot more comfortable. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of these lip balm, lip gloss, hybrid lipstick kind of products out now. And this isn't at the top of my lips. It gets the job done, it works. I don't dislike it but I would rather direct you to the glowing lip balms from Colourpop. So these are from one of their newest collections. I have quite a few of these in my collection now. These are my favorite lip formula from Colourpop. These are like a creamy pigmented lip balm lipstick hybrid. Not too pigmented though. Gives a really plush and glowy look to the lips. Definitely my favorite product for the lips that you can get at ColourPop. So this collection, can't remember the name of it at the top of my head, but it's like summery colors. I have on a more orange color in the demo, uh, but they do have a lot of neutral colors as well. These didn't make it into my last speed reviews because I wasn't wearing them. And then I was like, you know what? Let me wear these so I can talk about them in the next speed reviews. And I haven't been able to stop wearing them. I'm obsessed with these. The next product is something that I currently do have on my lips. 
very popular product. This is the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip Plump. It went trending, like super crazy trending on TikTok. It's a beautiful product. The M Cosmetics Lip Cushion is a product that I have that's very similar to this. This gives a really smooth look to the lips, very glossy. It's almost a lip gloss in kind of a push-up form. It has a very soft kind of minty feel to the lips that honestly feels really nice and cooling. I really do like this. I mean, I don't know that it deserves the huge hype that it got, but I think it looks really nice. It lasts a pretty good time, all things considered. Very comfortable, hydrating, plump on the lips, so I can't say anything bad about it. Probably not a product that I'm inclined to reach for all of the time, but a very good job. And if you like that style of product, I think you will like this. And by the way, I do have this shade Itchy Beige. Final two products, we have this lip gloss from NYX. This was highly recommended by you guys for me to try, so I took your advice on this. This is the, this is Juice Gloss in the shade Strawberry Flex, though I don't think the shade does too much. It's very sheer, but I love the scent. It smells like my childhood art Official AF strawberries, but so yummy. And this really is a very juicy, hydrating lip. It smooths right over the fine lines. I love the wet, dewy look that this gives my lips. I definitely want to pick this up in a few more shades if I'm able to. What a standout gloss from the drugstore. You guys did not lead me astray. So beautiful. I really like this. And they have so many flavors that really appeal to me. So if you're looking for something super juicy and wet for the lips, this is it. And then finally, I have four lip glosses from Nomad Cosmetics. This was from not their most recent launch, but the launch before that. I've never tried Nomad Cosmetics lip glosses. These are very bright vibrant, multi-dimensional shades, so they're not necessarily to my taste. So I've been wearing them a ton, but I gotta give Nomad credit where credit is due because the color that you see in the component itself is the exact look of the lips. I mean, just, they killed it. The glittery shade right here literally pulls as glitter on the lips, and they're quite comfortable as well. The shade in Meow right here is like a pink and gold duochrome. This is the most wearable one. Again, look, you see the duochrome on the lips, hot pink, purple. They do a good job. Not colors that I would wear very often, so I haven't gotten much wear out of them, but I'm very impressed with the formula and integrity to the color. Okay, you guys, there we have it. Those are all of the 30 products that I am tying up with a little nice bow to give you guys my final thoughts on after testing these multiple times. Let me know down below your thoughts on any of these products. What do you love? What do you not love? What do you agree and disagree with me on? I would love to hear it and start a conversation down below. And I hope you guys are enjoying these speed reviews, so make sure you like this video so that I We'll keep doing these videos and subscribe to my channel, of course, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Have a good one.